One of the pieces looking through the mesh is Killbox, often attributed to Joseph DeLapp, but it's actually a game about drone warfare, um, about the experience of killing, dying, and people doing these two things. And it's um, it's a, a collaboration between Joseph DeLapp and um, two Scotland-based des- designers, Malath Abbas, Tom DeMaio, and uh, Albert Irwin, sorry, three. They came and met my class at Winona State University, and this is the video transcribed. And I want to uh, welcome um, uh, my last Tom and Joseph DeLapp, who are the team responsible for um, Killbox. And also, uh, I want to thank my students for uh, Media Communication uh, 210 for being with us for this uh, interview for um, uh, for the King Through the Mesh uh, exhibition at uh, Nimi Arts Center in Limassol, uh, Cyprus. So the one thing that I'll wind up doing is, is that I often will wind up doing before this a little bit of an intro, but uh, because of the fact that my students don't uh, aren't aren't familiar with you, could you give yourselves a quick intro? Sure. Shall I start? Please. <clears throat> um... Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm Joseph DeLapp. I'm a, uh, a media artist and activist. I'm actually originally from San Francisco, California. I was at University of Nevada, Reno for over 20 years and I ended up moving to Scotland to take a job at Aberte University, which is one of the top game design programs in the world. But uh, primarily came here because I worked with these two fine gentlemen, uh, Mal and Tom, on this project, Killbox, um, in 2000. 15 came over while on sabbatical and we started this project which is a uh, essentially a two-person player where you either play as the drone pilot or a civilian on the ground uh, being targeted um so yeah so i'm i live in scotland i'm american and um yeah just that, that's me tom hi i'm tom i'm an artist sound designer um i've been in scotland for the last 10 years um, I'm a founder of Biome Collective, which is a community and creative studio that is there to uh, provide support and and uh, networking for artists and designers of all kinds. And um, I'm heavily involved in video games and interactive arts and uh, kind of combinations of, of all of these things. Fantastic. Mal? Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, I'm Malatha Bass, which is Mal for short. Um, yeah, I too am part of Biome Collective, uh, do quite a bit of games design and lots of production, or I'd like to call it creative production. Fantastic. Okay. So the, the piece being featured in uh, Speaking Through the Mesh, uh, that opens on um, uh, December 10th in uh, Limassol, Cyprus, is, co- is, is called uh, Killbox. And um, what, what uh, you know, a little bit of background on it and what, what brought you to... Um, uh, you know, producing, producing this piece of work. I'm um, sure. Um, so yeah, I was actually, this all started with a, a small um, grant I got from an organization um, in the States, um, uh, turbulence.org, which uh, previously used to fund internet-based artworks. And uh, I've been doing, I had been doing loads of work in working with computer games critically, but, um, and when they approached me about this, I was like, maybe it's time I actually made a, made a game. And I was curious about that. And I had a conversation with a curator friend who happened to live in Dundee, uh, Scotland, uh, Sarah Cook. And she said, oh, come to, come to Dundee and, and make this game. And I was like, why would I come to Dundee? I don't know anything of what are you talking about. And Dundee is actually uh, the kind of it really is a sort of central hub of, of games in Scotland, for sure, and if not the UK entirely, but it's actually where Grand Theft Auto was first invented. It's got um, Minecraft has lineage here. There, there's just loads of activity going on here. So um, anyway, long story short, she helped connect me with Mal and Tom uh, and became uh, eventually part of Biome Collective, uh, which I'm a member of as well. And uh, we I came over for a month and we worked on a, a kind of prototype as well, as well with Albert Elwin, the coder who is, who is not here um, at the moment. But, uh, and eventually we secured some further funding to finish the game and 
and uh, wildly successful. Um, but it was really the impetus behind it. Uh, I've done a lot of work about drone warfare and the costs and consequences to civilian populations and um, find them to be abhorrently cowardly weapons. And um, it just seemed, how would you take, you know, the, the, the drone, drone warfare is really kind of oftentimes looked at as this kind of gamification of warfare. How would you take that and actually turn it into a computer game that would make you think about what was going on, but also absorb you relatively quickly into a, into a interactive experience. And, and also, I think one of the key ideas that, that we approached this was not to make it fun, but to make it something that was really intense. Um, and uh, I, think, I think we did that. And, oh, but it was an amazing experience working with Mal, Tom, and Albert on this, because uh, I'm not a game designer myself or a programmer, et cetera. So it was really this uh, collaborative effort that resulted in this extraordinary game. I can maybe talk about the process if you want to talk about the game, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I sound good. So, yeah, I think just building on what Joe said, that, um, yeah, it was, we were kind of uh, the ones in Dundee at the time. And so, uh, yeah, we were introduced to, to Joe, obviously. And it was really interesting for us because we were based in this kind of co working space. It was the start actually of our organization, Biome Collective. So, there's, there's not many of us about in this massive, empty, kind of almost like it's warehouse. Mm. And it was really interesting because um, Joe brought a, a, a kind of a, an enthusiasm for the subject matter, um, um, and kind of an interest, a level of detail that, you know, we quite frankly did not have. I'm, I'm someone who's, who's very much interested in kind of politics, world politics, you know, world affairs, et cetera. And I thought I was quite educated on drone warfare. Um, but when Joe came along and kind of, got us to kind of research a little further, dig, dig deeper. It was fascinating to see, um, you know, how much I didn't know, quite frankly, speaking from, from a personal point of view. Um, mm. And we were able to kind of prototype something fairly quickly with that small amount of funding that, that, that Joe had. And, and it was tiny, it was really small amounts of money, but it was just enough to start the conversation. But very early we realized we were onto something and we got additional uh, funding to kind of um, expand the project for it to be what it is today. Uh, and I think what was really inspiring um, from what, in terms of what Joe brought to the table was, not only was it the subject matter, was this kind of approach to making both um, digital, which we were kind of used to, but also mm -hmm. physical to exist in gallery spaces. Um, and that was really yeah, kind of a fascinating adventure for us and mm -hmm. the kind of start of it all, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, one thing that I think is really interesting is that um, um, a few a few years later, um, I, I'd like for you to maybe comment a little bit on uh, um, America's Airman. Um, you know, the one in which uh, it's um, it was uh, an online online game in which um, all, almost like uh, America's Army, which and Joseph, you did, uh, you know, dead in that you did a piece, you know, with it, you know, called dead in Iraq. Um, you know, the thing is, is this is almost sort of the same sort of thing, but you know, online basically for the space force. And, you know, um, I was wondering, you know, um, have, have you, ref have you reflected, you know, on, you know, this, this, this sort of continuation of gam gamification of, you know of of the military that you know, for um, for recruiting purposes that um, especially the United States has done you know as opposed to kind of like the inversion of such you know that that kill in that kill box and your other other work has done. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've actually been uh, thinking a lot about drones lately, particularly with the the the. A noble end of the Afghanistan conflict, yes. you know, and the the drone strike in Kabul that, that wiped out the Ahmadi family um, was just simply horrifying. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's 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 um, yeah. I mean, I actually was just you know between Mal and Tom and myself communicating, and we were you know that that communicated them your interest in showing this in the in your exhibition they were like oh it's great the project's still getting out there and it's like yeah well it's sad that it's still relevant you know it's it's um 
the 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 use. I mean, one of the things we we researched when we were working on this game was that you know when when drone when drones were first being used by uh, actually they were introduced by George Bush, but they were really embraced by the Obama administration. Um, when, when they were first utilized, you know, people were really kind of upset and like, wow, what are we doing? To, and, and now it's just become typified, you know, and, that, and that's what happens with these kind of weapons. And so like what happened in Kabul, I think one of the only reasons we really heard about it was because there was so much press there. Um, I mean, those kind of drone strikes that have been killing innocent people have been happening, um, you know, constantly since 2004. Uh, there's just places where there aren't reporters and we're not, you know, we're not, they're sharing um, what they want to share with us. So it's, um, yeah, it's still highly relevant and sadly um, just become really sort of a typical um, a typical weapon in, in our arsenal uh, abroad. Uh, so yeah, sadly so. Yeah, one, one, one thing I think um, I, I, I kind of want to, you know, take the conversation. It, it's, it's kind of interesting that this, you know, the class that we're actually, inver- you know, in, inadvertently just sort of, you know, winding up uh, having you folks as, 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 a, as, a, as guest speakers in is uh, visual communication in, in a mass communication program. And the thing I think is very interesting is, is that, you know, I, I mean, of course, drone warfare, you know, uh, ties into, you know, the notion of, of, of telepresence. In other words, like satellite communication, it ties into, um, you know, the optics of video games and, um, you know, and, and, you know, also the, you know, uh, you know, also kind of a, a, a form of, of, of journalistic, um, um, you know, gesture. And the thing is, is that um, what, what, what do you, what do you think that the optics of, of, of drone warfare has done in regards to two things on one hand, the, um, the, the, the optics of conflict, and then also what do you think that the um, um, relation between, you know, like the informational, um, kind of like the, the relation that drone warfare has between um, informational politics, you know, which is kind of like the, you know, kind of like the politics of, of the, the, the internet and, and the internet is not just Facebook and, and the web and, and things like that. In other words, is that drone warfare is, is driven by, is, is used through, you know, it, it, it operates through the internet. And then um, also then, you know, the, uh, the notion of, uh, of biopolitics. In other words, you know, uh, Foucault's idea of, you know, the, the, the conventional uh, politics of the nation state. And, you know, I mean, how do you think that, um, you know, drone politics makes visible, you know, the, the intersection of biopolitics and in, informational politics. I think it's interesting that you use the word visible because in some respects, drone warfare is almost like an, uh, about invisibility and disassociation and um, using distance as a weapon itself, you know, distance uh, geographical, but also um, physical, I suppose, like <clears throat> the, it's using uh, an extension of like a physical extension, if you like, over distance and over people's mind space, like how, how people think about these things and, and, and whether or not they are thinking about them to conduct kind of semi legal um, wars in, in countries very, very far away. And I think one of the things that um, was disturbed that well, that's really a disturbing aspect of drone warfare. I think for us is, is a kind of it's all about distancing and, and like you said tele telepresence. It's like how to make it possible to conduct a war without anyone really knowing it's happening, and the control of media and the control of information from that. Um, and I think one of the things well, I know that one of the things that inspired us in a strange way was people who had gathered the right gathered information that was kind of again invisible it was very difficult to find public um publicly displayed information about drone deaths and this that and the other it was very obscured you know what constitutes a, a, a death 
the government might have one um, number, the Bureau of Investigative Change um, might have another, I think that's what they're called. And one of the things that we found inspirational was this idea of people making the effort to find the information, filter it, try and organize it and present it. You know, to me, this is one of the great, one of the great things about the internet in a way that could be passed and understood by others. But in saying that, in terms of visual communication, what you tend to do is you tend to condense these large numbers into uh, visual kind of micro micro meaning. And uh, we found a lot of beautiful visual uh, data visualizations that reduced people and large numbers of people to kind of essentially dots and circles and, you know, corresponding and, and uh, different sizes and values of these dots. Yeah, these, right? these, these mass abstractions, right? Yeah, and so we, we ended up using that as a, as a way to, to try and re reclaim them to some degree within the game itself. So in terms of the kind of the advert that I, I put a link into the, well, the trailer that I put a link into the, the chat, um, and in terms of the characters within the game, they all basically are animated dots. <clears throat> that serve two purposes that allowed us to, to remain abstracted to some degree, uh, but it also allowed us to kind of, in some sense, like reclaim that abstraction that had been kind of presented to us in the first yeah. place. So yeah, so the, the visibility slash invisibility thing is a really interesting aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One one thing that also reminds me reminds me also Wafa Belial's um, piece in which uh, he uh, had a a dot for every casual casualty in the Iraq war, you know, on his, on, on his, on his back. And um, so. That gave us a, that gave us an opportunity in the physical installation as well to, to kind of really hammer that home a little bit. Um, so in the physical installation, you you play, well, in one of the versions anyway, you play inside a, a container, a big black box. And uh, you're asked to, at the end of the game, without too much of a spoiler, people are asked, you know, what happened? How many, how many uh, people were killed in the drone strike, essentially? Because that's, that's an aspect of the drone pilot's job is to identify the dead. So even with this huge distance, they're still having, to, they're still looking with these telescopic cameras uh, in a, in a, uh, at the, the, the destruction of their actions in a way that most people aren't, which has led to different kinds of trauma, and that's a whole other story. But also, that it's up to them to declare and the team to declare how many people have died. And so we put that to people as they came out of the game, and then they decorated, if you like, or it was kind of printed on the outside of the box in these dots. And so mm -hmm. over the course of the gallery and of course the exhibition, of course, these dots built up. And we really wanted to, it, there's always a risk in, a, in an experience like this that people go, oh, cool, oh, that's you know, something to think about and then walk off and it's all gone. So it's really important for us to kind of just main, maintain that questioning headspace a little bit longer and get them to kind of interact. Right, okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to, do something that um, I, I don't think that I will I, I've I'm, I will have done with any of the other guest uh, artists for this exhibition um, is that I was wondering whether any of my students had any questions. I mean, I have a couple a couple more questions that 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 I have, but I'm just wondering whether any of my questions might have any uh, my students might have any questions for any uh, any any of the artists. I realize this. I realize this is kind of a surprise, but uh, you know, this is actually a a, a, um, a quite well documented game on the uh, global new media scene. Okay. Well, evidently not. Okay. Well, well, we'll get we'll give it uh, an, another. Another I do wonder, Patrick. I mean, I'm really wondering. I just, I do wonder in terms of um, 
the students present today. I, I do wonder how many actually uh, play games even and how many actually see, them, see themselves as gamers. I'd be, I'd be quite keen to, curious to find out. Mm -hmm. Or indeed, if anyone is actually there. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple people here. You game, Cody? Uh, I yeah. yeah, yeah, we've got a guy here who games. Cody dabbles, cool. I, mean, I guess, I guess the I asked that question because I think one of the most fascinating things I I came across during the project was the fact that um, you know we obviously we designed it, we created it for as a two player experience. So two people would play it. You know, sat in chairs facing each other, and a lot of design went into that about the steps each player takes and how we kind of take them through this narrative and you know, it was all fascinating really interesting stuff but when we tested it out as a prototype it was fascinating to see that a lot of people would just watch people play and there was always yes. a bigger audience of people watching people play which i thought was fascinating so it kind of it kind of bridged that gap so it kind of it became um, a project that wasn't just for people who play games it went beyond and it became a piece of a piece of performance in its own right where sure. people would kind of hover around and see that because you can see one screen is the pilot's view the other screen it looks like a village so you can start to piece together the narrative yourself as the players kind of interact with each other remotely while they're linked so that was really fascinating and kind of yeah as it went exhibited from city to city country to country there would always be maybe like a, a tenfold number of people watching as opposed to people playing, which I thought was quite quite interesting. And certainly from a point of communication and, and putting a message across, I never expected that. And I never I never planned for that. And I don't think any of us did, but it was certainly something that we lent into because what, what one thing we did was it wasn't a case that we're gonna make art, we'll see you in a year's time. We 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 treated it as a kind of iterative piece of art. So we would constantly showcase it, even when it was like a month yeah. old. We, we, we showed a, a rough demo in our in our studio and then it became a small event in the city, a small event in Edinburgh, the capital, um, the VNA Design Week in London. And it just snowballed mm -hmm. to kind of being exhibited worldwide as sure. it was being created, which was mm -hmm. quite interesting for us. Yeah, it was almost like play testing it through through exhibitions and, and that kind of thing. I also think it was really interesting to point out that it was experienced by so many non-gamers you know you ask that question and and yeah. especially in in gallery situations specifically yeah yeah that's 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 that's, that's, that's right that's that's yeah, right uh, yeah. yeah that was that was but also just to point out it's freely downloadable you can download it from steam and other places as well so if you do want to play it but you won't be playing okay, against yeah. another player obviously right, but, right um you, you can you can experience it by the way, one thing I think is very interesting is is that it was it was it was featured in a uh, in an art summit in uh, Karachi, Pakistan, yeah. and uh, how, how was how 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 was how was the re, how was the reception of that in in that in that context? Well, I, you know, actually, that came about. Um, that's kind of curious, actually. I, I sometimes forget about this, but when I first when I first um, was interested in approaching the subject matter via a game. My, my initial idea was to actually go to Pakistan to actually work on the, the design of the game with, uh, with local populations, you know, to, mm -hmm. to actually build, build the game in, in Pakistan. And I had some contacts in Karachi and um, had looked into doing that, but at the time it was just not, it wasn't feasible and it wasn't safe um, to do so. No. And um, that, that kind of fell through and, and that's, it just, as these things go, I think it that was probably about the time where I just had a conversation with my, with Sarah Cook in, in Dundee about the project and about you know going on sabbatical, and that's how it landed up in Dundee. But it, by by course of all of these kind of conversations you have along the way, which is typical for a, a project of this scale, looped back to those people in in Karachi, and and it landed up being shown in an exhibition there. I, I, I can't tell you that I have really specific feedback from that, but it was um, it was well received and appreciated, I think, in, in that context. And, and we were really, really sensitive, I think, when we were making this project about how to do something like this that is 
um, we are depicting this other who that that we're killing with these mm -hmm. kind of virtualized weapons. And how do you do that in such a way that is sensitive and not ex not exploitation in, a, in and of itself? And, and I, I hope we have accomplished that. And I think some of that thinking led to the abstraction and to the dealing with the dots and that, which I think was a brilliant idea um, that, that came through this collaborative process. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this project is a few years old. I mean, how how do you how do you feel about it now? You know, you know now that certain world events have have come have come and gone, and um, you know where where do you think that the um, you know is that I, I at least Joseph and I are in in pretty uh, um, frequent contact, and it's just a matter of saying. You know this 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 sort of discussion is like where 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 do you see where where do you see it um, where do you see it where do you see it progressing uh, as we wrap up? Tom, um, Mal, I mean, I have thoughts, but I was just going to say, mean, I think it's been one of the. I, I you know honestly, from from my perspective, after when we were just actually literally when. We, we were going to, this game was actually nominated for a BAFTA, which is in, in, in the UK, that's like the Oscars. They, they had, they had the, we were nominated for a BAFTA in Scotland for the best computer game. And we were going to the award ceremony the week that Donald Trump was elected in 2000, was that 17, 16? That was 17, 16, 2016. And I remember, I don't know. Since then, with, with Trump, the four years of Trump were just extremely depressing. And he ra he ramped up the use of drones dramatically and uh, loosened many of the restrictions that the Obama administration had been forced to. So, when I look back on it, it's, um, like I said earlier, I think it's really sad that the game is still very, very, very relevant. Um, uh, you know, there was just in the news yesterday about a, a failed drone attack in uh, in Iraq to try to kill the, the leader um, in the green zone. And so, it, you know, the, 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 it's been a Pandora's box has been opened in a way. So it is kind of depressing. Um, but but I think it does, if I can say anything about this project, I think it does show the power of actually trying to create, trying to use simulative technologies to do something that's not about you know it, that is about important things, and to get people to think and try to have some some sort of empathy. Uh, I think some of the most powerful experiences I've seen of people playing this game have been you know they've come away in tears. You know that that it really does affect people. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's um, sometimes feels like spitting spitting in the wind, you know, in a way trying to do these kind of things. But I think it's important to do and to do what we do and try to do it well. Um, I don't know, Mal, Tom, maybe you have some perspective on this as well. I think I think how you put it, Joe, is really good in terms of like the potential for games as a medium. Um, I think we, ha we had we we all had the privilege to work together on this and to kind of collapse on this kind of idea and express it to the world, and you know it's resonated in the sense that you know people are playing it, they're enjoying it, you know. As, as much as you can enjoy such a thing, obviously. And what's been interesting for me is, yeah, it does live on. It kind of, it's a complete piece of work and it just kind of lives on, but it definitely opens up the door for us to re... I mean, I'm happy to kind of uh, go back and address a topic again, you know, in a kind of different way, a different approach, uh, or just to generally, it's inspired me personally to kind of tackle different issues through the medium of games. I think... Certainly, the three of us have talked about the climate emergency and how we, mm -hmm. how we'd like to kind of uh, explore yeah. that space for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess certainly, for, you know, for me, I I I I like the fact that it's a great it's a great entry point to people who maybe don't play games or don't see themselves as, as gamers, and can and can see it as a kind of as an art form that is really powerful and a great way to kind of communicate um, to the masses. Yeah. Um, Tom, what are your thoughts? I mean, you guys have, have uh, done a good job of kind of echoing a lot of my thoughts. I, for me, this project in particular um, exists uh, as a 
um, finished piece that I'm, I'm not surprised, but I'm very glad that it's had quite the life that it's had. It's, it's had quite a long life and I can imagine it lasting a lot longer because we weren't held to any external pressures apart from making it the best experience that we could. So we weren't, and I think that helped to inform the development of it as something that was as meaningful as possible and not, and having to make very clear decisions the whole way about um, how we would make it and what we were going to do with it. It's quite a limited, you know, you wouldn't call it, it's not like a triple A three hour, six hour game. It's, it's a very short specific piece of work that uses the kind of the actuality and the, and the kind of metaphor of games to, to, to give people the opportunity to participate in something that they, there's no other art form out there that, that, that could do this, I think is incredibly specific to this project. It's the kind of the subject matter and the control mechanism and the interface are, you know, they're, they're perfectly aligned to make a piece of work that is kind of fully self-contained. Um, so, you know, we did do it six years ago or something like that, mm -hmm. or five years ago, is it that long? And and it it, it is what it is. I it think still it still resonates. It, yeah. It, it, it's lasted. Yeah. Um, and I think likewise to the other guys, you know, for me, that speaks to my hope, which is to make meaningful, um, meaningful yeah. work. Meaningful. And, 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 I, and I think one thing that's really important in regards to, you know, how, how this relates to, you know, uh, American politics is that, you know, it, it relates to, um, you know, uh, um, it, it relates to um, multiple administrations across multiple parties and that sort of thing. So, and, you know, it, it, it really, you know, isn't so much, a part, it isn't a, you know, so much, a, um, yeah, it isn't a um, partisan, you know, piece, you know, so much. I mean, it's you know, really, you know, a. Um, it's a human, it's a human work. It's a though. human piece. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, I agree. So um, we're, we're, we're about done on time. So, um, you know what? Um, you know what? I I want to I want to thank my students for their patience, and I also want to thank um, you know you three for your um, for your generosity for uh, coming and and speaking with us, and uh, you know we'll be um, you know thanks for being part of the exhibition. I really appreciate it. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. And I just encourage the students to download the game and play it, try it out, so you can see what we're talking about. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everyone.